Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. If you're new to our show and new to veganism, you're checking it out because of Veganuary. Thanks. Thanks for getting a shot and thanks for watching our show. And just a quick rundown for those of you who have never heard of it. Veganuary. It's in its third year running now and it's a program designed to inspire and support people to try out veganism for one month during the month of January. So once your friends and family catch wind that you're going vegan for a month, you might not be ready for the barrage of weird questions that you'll get. We hear them all the time as long-term vegans, so that's why I'm making this episode to help you out to deal with all the dumb, silly questions you're going to get. All right, so the number one stupid question you'll get asked as a one-month or 10-year vegan is, where do you get your protein? It seems like most people I talk to have this weird mistaken belief, probably given to them by mass media somehow, is that... Plants have no protein. The only way to get protein is to eat a dead animal or at least have some of its milk or cheese or eggs or something like that. No, nothing be further from the truth. All plants have protein. Yes, all. You heard it here. If you don't believe me, just Google it. All plants have protein. So as long as you're eating sufficient calories, get enough food, you're going to get enough protein. Don't believe me? Go check out the American Dietetics Association, a very boring, stodgy, non-pro-vegan organization, and they even recommend a vegan diet as appropriate for all stages of life. If you feel like you have to get a little extra protein for some odd reason, no problem. Have some quinoa, have some broccoli, have some pumpkin seeds, have all manners of legumes. They're all packed with protein if you need a little bit more. And another stupid question you'll probably get asked, because I hear this all the time when I talk to people about how I'm vegan, is doesn't a vegan diet make you weak? They think they have to eat meat in order to feel strong and get their energy back from like working out. Again, nothing could be further from the truth. Take a look at my example here. I'm a relatively old, 49 years old, but every week I play basketball. I'm out there multiple times a week running, riding my bike, sometimes going surfing or playing tennis. And you know, that's just anecdotal. Let's look at some professional athletes. Yeah, how about an NFL lineman? Former NFL lineman here, David Carter. No, no, I met him a few times, a really cool guy, full on vegan. Check him out, the 300 pound vegan. In professional basketball, we have Wilson Chandler of the Denver Nuggets, 29 years old, playing the best basketball he's had since 2011 with a recent series of back-to-back -back nights of 25 point plus games. And I think the most damning piece of evidence to shut up these haters that think going vegan makes you weak, ask them to look at the only male U.S. weightlifter to qualify for the Olympics last year. Kendrick Ferris, guess what? He's a vegan. Perhaps the stupidest thing you'll hear from people who are opposed to going vegan is they'll come out and say, well, plants have feelings, plants can feel pain. Well, no, that's the stupidest thing ever. Plants don't have the necessary physiology to experience emotions and feelings. They don't have a brain, let's say. They don't have a central nervous system. They can't feel anger or embarrassment or pain. It's just a silly thing that people will throw at you. And they don't even care about plants anyway, but they'll say that because they know that their meat eating entails that animals will die and feel pain. And another silly thing you're probably going to hear from some people is this following question. Well, what if everyone went vegan overnight? What would happen to the, all the animals? Would we just let them loose and roam the earth? Well, they do have a strange valid point in the sense that they don't realize it though, but 70 billion animals are raised to be killed for humans to eat meat and have milk and all that stuff every year. 70 billion animals. So yeah, if they were all released at the same time, it would be complete chaos. But it would never work like that in the real world. Yeah, veganism is making gains, gradual gains. So each year that more and more people go vegan, the amount of animals that need to be raised for the slaughter decreases. So eventually there'll come a point where we'll have fewer and fewer animals. There'll never be billions of animals released onto the world. It just doesn't work like that. It's just plain silly. Another thing you might get from people, and this one just really bugs me because it's so untrue, is that I could never afford to be vegan. It just costs way too much money. Well, depends what you're eating. If you're eating a bunch of expensive processed foods, yeah, they might have a point, but I'm talking about the basics of a whole food, plant-based diet. The basic foods, there's nothing in the world out there that's cheaper. It's because the poorest people in the world live off this stuff. I'm talking about rice. You get like a 20-pound sack of rice for like... 15 bucks at some markets. That'll last you for weeks, maybe months. Potatoes, same thing. Get a big 20 pound sack of potatoes for like five to 10 bucks. Bananas, a 40 pound box for 15 to $20. Legumes are cheap too. 
And you'll probably hear from some bacon lovers like, mmm, bacon, I can't give up my bacon. Well, I guess they can't give up getting cancer too. Yes, the World Health Organization just came out last year proclaiming processed meats, and that includes bacon, as being class two, that means probable carcinogens. Well, let's compare that to plants. How many whole food plants are classified as carcinogens? None. And speaking of the World Health Organization, if people adopted a diet based on their guidelines, a plant-based diet, approximately 5 million lives would be saved from eating healthier, like getting less diseases. 5 million lives per year, and food-based, food-related greenhouse gases would be cut by about two-thirds. So if Veganuary is what brought you here to this video, just stop watching this right now. Go over to Netflix and check out Cowspiracy. If you're new to this, you're probably totally unaware of the ecological disaster we're bringing on to our planet and ourselves through animal agriculture. So go check that out right away. So I hope now you're ready to deal with all the people that are to come after you with hate and dissent over your choice to not have meat and dairy products for the month of January. So you're ready now to deal with them, I hope. So hit like if you feel you're better prepared now than you were at, than at the start of this video. And down below, I want you all, new Veganuary people and longtime vegans too, to let me know what are the stupid questions you get asked about you know, not eating meat? What's the stupidest question you ever got asked? And also let me know if you had a good response or you weren't sure what to say. So yeah, let's all have a nice good discussion about that down there. Let me know. I really want to read these all. And uh, if you got something, hit like, share it with a friend who's going on Veganuary as well. Help them out here too. And stay tuned for more from me and Angie at Happy Healthy Vegan. So until next time, guys, get some rice, get some bananas, get some potatoes, and keep it carved, baby. Keep it carved all month.